During my interviews with the teachers here at Wigo Kindergarten, I focused on these seven questions. Here are some video clips with the teachers I interviewed. Do you think children in kindergarten should be exposed to technology? Well, I would say of course they should because we live in a world of technology and uh, children need to be prepared to use different technologies, interact with it, it's perfectly normal. Or how do you incorporate technology into your classroom? Well, um, we do play music on our little music boxes and we'll also show videos on YouTube. Do you yeah. think uh, technology makes your teaching easier? Yes, sometimes if you show the media from the computer and uh, less videos over prepared, it will for your teaching, why not? Yes, of yeah, course. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Basically, that all the teachers agree that kindergarten students should be exposed to technology, but they shouldn't be overexposed to technology because uh, playing with their friends, interacting, playing outside, exploring, learn by doing should pr be priority for these students. The teacher also prefer not for the students to have technology in the classroom, like iPads and computers. And that's why we also have an audio lab in our school. So students are taken to the audio lab where each child have access to these devices. Uh, the reason for this is because they are afraid that they will break it and it also might prevent teachers from playing interactive games with the students in the classrooms. Teachers do not use technology as the main method for teaching, they just use it to assist their teaching. They also all agree that uh, students learn through different ways, some learn visually, some learn better through audio and some learn better through experience. The more opportunities and experiences we can expose them to, the better they can learn. Lesson plan analysis, I will talk about seeing shapes. Students will learn about two-dimensional shapes and create a class book identifying these shapes around the school. So first is the task. Teacher explain to the students that the numbers are not just abstract but they can see be seen all around them in the classroom and in the campus. And then number two is engaging. So first of all, you start maybe to introduce these shapes to them by using flashcards. So I will put the flashcards on the whiteboard and maybe take a sticky ball, divide them into groups, and then they have to throw these shapes. It's a great way to get them active and interact. Then after that, you can show them a video that has these shapes in. So a video that I would use is this song by Jack Hartman. I really like Jack Hartman because his videos are very educational. The kids love him because he's kind of fun and funny. Let's play the name the shape game. It's fun. So this is not something that the teacher mentioned, but something that I would use. And then another thing that you can do is, is to read a story. She mentioned something about the shapes of me and other stuff by Dr. C.S. So maybe teacher can read this book to the students and later maybe play them the video on YouTube. The third thing that the students can do is they start looking for shapes in the classrooms. So for example, the computer screen would be a triangle and the clock would be a circle. Also, you can start introducing uh, two-dimensional shapes and then start by creating. You can take the students out to the, on the campus and then they have to start recognizing shapes on the campus. For example, if you look at this picture, they can see an oval in this tunnel. We have a supernova on our playground. The supernova is in the shape of a, you know, of a circle. And then teacher can also take pictures of this. When they go back to the classroom, she can project it onto the projector and just kind of review these shapes that they saw. Another thing that I would do is I would take a, like a survey with different shapes on and then the students have to take a marker and then all the shapes they see outside they have to kind of check and then in the, eventually they see how many of, the, of each shape can they see outside. So this is an interactive way when they go back to the classroom they can discuss with each other. Once again this comes down to counting and numbers and something the teacher mentions is the app Wixi. So I have never used Wixi before. The teacher can upload the picture on the app. They can recognize these shapes with by saying saying it and then also using like paint brushes, painting the shapes, drawing pictures on it. And then eventually the teacher can make a, a, like a, a team project from this. And also another thing they can do is um, they can recognize it by saying the supernova is um, beside the slide, something like that. So it's, it's numbers, it's shapes, and it's also talking about 
about directions. And then um, a way to share this is teacher can print these projects. They can take it to the class. They can put it up on the wall. They can make a book from these projects. They can take it home, showcase it to the parents. And then this can also be uploaded onto the school's uh, website. Number five is assessing these children, evaluating, reviewing what they have learned. Then if they are able to recognize all the shapes and how many two-dimensional shapes can are they able to, to recognize. But I do like this lesson plan because the teacher incorporates a variety of methods to try and teach um, shapes and numbers to the students. Last, the standards that the teacher kept in mind. So here are the common core state standards for math. Um, these are specifically the U.S. state standards. So for example, she used the CCSS content KGA1. And this is kindergarten geometry, identifying, describing shapes. And then the other one that she, that she kept in mind is the ISTE standards for students. And here she used specifically the third one and numbers. And the sixth one, uh, I have it here. The third one is knowledge constructors. Students cr critically curate a variety of resources using digital tools to construct knowledge produce creative artifacts and make meaningful learning experience for themselves and others. I think the teacher was very successful in implementing all of this into her lesson plan. That's why I like this lesson plan. It's definitely something I will use. Here is a technology-enabled lesson plan guide and checklist that teachers can use when they plan their lesson plans. Number one is to know who your students are. Take into account their cultures, their ability level and backgrounds, and then also know your content. Research, utilize curriculum guides published by the state, also know the national standards and state standards, for example, the ISTE, then know the materials that are available to you and to teach for success. Know the tools that your school provide in order to help the students and also take into account the materials and resources that are available, for example, computers, a teacher mentor. Number four, what student outcomes are you working towards? So, For example, if you are teaching reading, then you would probably take into account maybe an online app that you will use that will help enhance their reading skills. And then last is to reflect after each lesson and then see what's working and what's not working and adjust if it's necessary. It's